Okay, so update four, 16 weeks of training, 13 weeks specific marathon training towards Abu Dhabi Marathon. And we're in now week two of specific marathon training. So this is a report on week one of marathon training. And from this, I think what you'll get is again, you'll get an idea of what's it like when life gets in the way, because this is not the perfect week. The perfect week for me is Wednesday interval session, Sunday long run, some recovery runs, some easy runs, strength sessions. This is different from week one. And you don't want it to be like that because you want all the stars to align. You want everything to go perfect. But there's some athletes I'm coaching right now that are, you know, they're sick because children have just come back to school, throws a spanner in the works, all of a sudden you have to navigate that issue. What do you do? Do you kind of power through it or are you sensible? Are you able to sort of look back, bigger picture and see where you really stand? And I think it either comes from experience of it going wrong and you having to course correct and you knowing what it feels like when you've got your heart invested in something in the future and you're terrified that you're not on track or to get injured even worse and to actually learn from your own very, very painful mistake. Not that the injury is painful usually, but that the being sidelined is painful when you know you're trying to show up for something in three months time, four months time, and you feel like it's getting away from you. Never panic. And I think the main thing that I've learned, or one of the main things that I've learned in the last 15 years is just zoom out and just look at the bigger picture and see that you're trending up, your fitness is trending up. You've got muscle memory and you're, kind of, you, you're always starting from a point of experience, not from scratch. And therefore, if you, if you kind of like take a step back, okay, we're still moving forward. And what it gives you on the macro is definitely a more balanced view of, okay, I'm ill, you know, the children are ill or whatever might be the case. I'm not gonna panic about it. I've still got another 11, 12 weeks until the, the main dance and so I can chill out now. If you're injured, exactly the same. And in actual fact, a calm head when you're injured and a very reasoned sort of approach to being injured. Okay, go and see a specialist, see what is actually happening. How do we fix not just the problem, but the root of the problem? Stuff like that you can get from experience. You should be able to get from just reading about other people's experiences, but it hits home a lot harder and the lesson is learned a lot deeper, if that makes sense, when it happens to you. And, you know, rightly or wrongly, this took me a way too long to learn because I was always the, the one like, come on, push, push. It's in the training schedule, so it's happening. It's often not the best way and it will take you into trouble. My approach has always been go hard, and if it pays off, you'll win or you'll you know, set the course record or whatever. The amount of times when it hasn't and I've not been able to make the start line or made the start line, but I know it's not going to work. <laughs> it, it, it's more powerful to learn those lessons, but it's so much smarter to learn from other people's mistakes. So please learn from my mistakes. OK, so Monday was 90 minutes fart like run. So fart like it's just a Swedish word for speed play five minutes flat or one percent five minutes at three percent but all at the same pace so essentially it makes the three percent the effort is three times as much as one percent so monday took a lot more out of me for that fart leg run than it usually would usually that long run which would usually be on a sunday would be followed by a recovery run on the monday that took a lot out of me and was kind of like an interval session because I'm still running all my runs fasted, so I haven't got this uh, yet in the program, which is exactly what I'll be using on race day. I'll have to look at the logistics in Abu Dhabi. I ran the course before, so I know there's a lot of out and backs, and so I know that I can give bottles to somebody, and I will be met along the course every 20 minutes, and that, you know, it goes in really quickly. If there's a point, and I will carry a couple of gels, if there's a point where I'm not getting 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour, I don't think I'm getting it right for that sort of 20 minute period, then I'll carry a couple of gels and take those and have those as backups. It's always good to look at the goal, look at what's possible, and then work back from that and use exactly the same nutrition. So from this week, more on 320 mix and the 100 gels or the 160 gels moving forward on the interval sessions and the long runs. So it's doing two things for me not running out of energy, not hitting a wall, not even getting close to the wall. And also it's preventative maintenance. So not only 
am I preventing the muscle breakdown as much at the end of those sessions or even sort of after 40 minutes to an hour, but it also frees me up in my head to push harder. So I'm able to push harder on that interval session and the long run so I could do more of them more frequently and hit them at the right level. So I'm getting more super compensation, I'm getting more improvement. And that is, that is your improvement for the training schedule. So really, really important. Um, but the last two, four weeks have been fasted uh, and I'm starting to feel it now. I'm starting to get to that point where it's 90 minutes or 85, 90 minutes and it's quicker segments. It's starting to get specific when I actually need that. So Tuesday, after the long run on the Monday, ended up being a rest. Wednesday was a recovery run, 45 minutes recovery run out there. Super hot, 39 degrees, 515 per kilometer. To give you an idea, if I was to do the same heart rate and be in the UK at the moment between sort of 12, 15, 18 degrees, that would be about four minutes to four minutes 20 per kilometer. So it's a minute per kilometer slower to do a recovery run and in 45 minutes, I'm only covering 8.5K. On the Friday, that was the interval session. But then I've got into my head, okay, how do I course correct it? Because essentially, I want the Sundays and, and Wednesday, Sunday long run, Wednesday interval session. Interval session takes out the most of me, so I need four days to recover to then hit the, the long run. But I've got the All In Run Club to look after. And so how does that then work if I've got to do the, the 5K get there before everybody else and then start timing it. It's meaning that I'm going harder than an easy run on the Sunday and I'm also not able to go off and do my own thing straight away afterwards. There's some people there that are finishing in 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 minutes and that's brilliant and it's a, it's a great problem to have. Um, and I love it and feeding off that energy and the group is great and it's a great community and that will scale out and become a much bigger thing. But what do I do? So the simple, thing is, okay, have Tuesdays and Saturdays, but when you're on a weekly basis, like this week, it's like, okay, how do I get there? So my solution was Friday will be an interval session, but I'm going to bring that interval session back. I think the week before was seven times five minutes or something like that. So 35 minutes of hard work. This interval session was 7% gradient and 20 times one minute. Next step, run one minute. Rest completed one minute. So it's only 20 times one minute. So what it's allowing me to do is I'm keeping a check on my speed and also keeping a check on the hill running, which is gonna come in really handy for the KOM attempts. But at the same time, it's not so much out of the body so that the next day I can do a recovery run, which usually after an interval session isn't possible. I usually have a rest day. And then the day after that, I've got the All In Run Club 5K, which I can comfortably do. So that leaves us with 12 weeks to Abu Dhabi Marathon. Three, in three weeks, there's the road race and there's a couple of KOMs coming up. I think the big thing from this week is, as I wrap up like a newsreader, the big thing from this week is things are not gonna be straight. They're not going to be in a direct line to your goal. And if you think, if you're expecting them to be, not only are you gonna be shocked, you're not gonna be prepared to properly course correct. Whereas if you are expecting one of a thousand things to come in the way, you're preparing yourself for the training program, the training programs, and also the races as well. Things happen in races that you can be in the best shape of your life, but all of a sudden, something happens with your shoe or something happens with your roll your ankle or something happens on the course or you get to a drink station they've run out of drinks if you're not prepared for any situation you're going to run into more problems so part of distance running is problem solving on the go and that prepares you for everything in life but it definitely should prepare you for distance running so if you're training for something right now and all of a sudden the kids are sick and therefore you catch it and sidelines you for a week don't panic because you put a plan in place, and if you can do 80% of that work, hit 80% of the key sessions, then you're good to go and you're good to be in PB shape. And that is the art of planning the training schedule. If you try to go hard and do an interval session when you know you're sick, you're gonna dig yourself into a hole that you can't get out. If you try to then do your long run whilst you're sick or you're recovering, it's gonna take you out for another three, four days. 
And so you can either learn that the hard way, and I have, or you can be smarter than me and learn it from somebody like me who's talking to their phone on YouTube. But yeah, that's what I take from this week. And there's much more patience leading up to it. There's much more sort of, don't want to say it, but maturity. There's much more maturity because it's not life or death. Um, I put just as much into it, but it's more about, okay, you know your body and you know what it's capable of and you know you're going to push. When it comes to interval day, if you're ready, you know you're going to push. You know when to step off the track or step off the road or step off the treadmill when it's not going to plan in an interval session. And that is the, the self-awareness that you need and can often come from your coach as well. Exactly the same with the long run. If you think about it like this, every training session will push you on by 1%, maximum 1%. So in the grand scheme of things, if you miss three, four days, including a session, it's not the end of the day and it's certainly not the end of the training program or the end of the world, you know. So just be patient, let the training come to you. Don't try and chase the times. Don't try and chase the paces. Don't try and chase the big sessions. Let it all come to you and be ready for it. 